And shalom. We are starting. This is for November 25th. You just get knocked out by like Johnny B. Good, aren't they? All right, we are live. So the insight scripture for two, for the 25th yesterday's is Hebrews 11, 1 through 8. In the insight reading, I lost my book. No, man. Really, I just had the thing. Ah. Well, okay. Oh, here we are. Oh, gosh. It's Ezekiel 24 through 26. But if I remember right, they're kind of short books, so. And then Second Peter 2. Oh, pardon me. Oh, I am so sorry I did that. I did not mean to do that. But uh, I needed to do that, to be quite honest, because that was part of why I was nauseated before. Okay, Hebrews 11, 1 through 8. But yes, please do excuse me. I didn't mean to belch. Okay. Uh, Father, uh, we are still standing in prayer and asking for you to help us to gain wisdom and knowledge, discernment and understanding of your word, and help us to continue to just eat the word and just get it inside of us, Lord, and let it grow. We thank you in Jesus' name. We thank you, Father. You're so worthy to be praised. So the book of Hebrews was written to encourage Jewish believers in Jesus who were facing persecution. I don't know if it'll let me actually see all three verses. I doubt it. My mouse will cooperate. Hebrews 32 through 35, it says. Uh, probably not. It says, remember those earlier days after you had received the light, when you endured in a great conflict full of suffering. Sometimes you were publicly exposed to insult and persecution. Uh, though at other times, you stood side by side with those who were so mistreated, you suffered in the stops. So then let's read the whole. And were thus in danger of drifting away and reverting back to Judaism. The unnamed author encouraged them to live by faith and to persevere in verses 36 to 39. And explained what living by faith means in chapter 11, verse 1. Pardon me, which we'll read here in just a moment. Oh, my goodness. Author listed another exa uh, listed examples of many uh, people who lived by such faith to illustrate that this is the only way to please God. Anyone who comes to Him must believe that He exists and that He rewards those who care earnestly seek Him. These faithful believers trust. God, despite their their adverse circumstances and the disappointment of not yet receiving what had been promised. In verse 39, this was written by K.T. Sim. I'm getting really, really sleepy now. I'm hoping I can at least get through these two before I pass out. Okay, come. Okay. Hebrews 11, 1 through 8. By faith we understand. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good testimony. By faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that seen were not made of things which are Faith at the dawn of history. By faith, Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. Uh, uh, which, though which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and, and through it, being dead, still speaks. Uh, by faith, Enoch ha was taken away so that he did not see death and was not found because God had taken him but before he was taken he had this testimony that he pleased God 
But without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. By faith, Noah, being divinely warned of things not yet moved, or not yet seen, moved with godly fear, prepared an ark for the saving of his household, by which he condemned the world, and became heir of the righteousness which is according to faith. By faith Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to the place which he would receive as an inheritance, and he went out not knowing where he was going. <clears throat> Seeing by faith, during my morning walk, the sun hit the waters of the Lake Michigan at a perfect angle to produce a stunning view. I asked my friend to stop and wait for me as I positioned my camera to take a pic. Because of the position of the sun, I couldn't see the image of on my phone's screen for a floor snap the shot. But having done this before, I sensed it would be a great picture. I tell my friend, we can't see it now, but pictures like this always uh, come out good. Walking by faith through this life is often like taking pictures. You can't always see the details on the screen, but that doesn't mean that the stunning picture isn't there. You don't always see God working, but you can trust that he's there. As the writers of the Hebrew... Uh, Ow! Dang it. As the writer of Hebrews pen, faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. By faith, we place our confidence and assurance in God, especially when we can't see or understand what he's doing. With faith, not seeing doesn't prevent us from taking the shot. It just might make us pray more. And seek God's direction. We also we can also rely on knowing what's happened in the past as others have walked with faith, as well as through our own stories, what God has done before He can do again. And that was written by Katera Patan Patton. Katera Katera or Katera Patton. Okay. Why do you trust in God to do every, even though you may not see it clearly right now? How has he delivered you or your family in the past? Heavenly Father, thank you for all the ways you've provided for me in the past. Help me to walk by faith even if I can't see all you're doing. Okay, Ezekiel 24, a symbol of the cooking pot. Again, in the ninth year, in the tenth month, on the tenth day of the month, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, write down the name of the name, name of the day, this very day, the king of the Babylon, the king of Babylon, started his siege against Jerusalem this very day, and utter a parable to the rebellious house, and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, put on a pot, set it. On and also pour water into it. Gather pieces of meat in it, every good piece, the thigh and the shoulder, fill it with choice cuts, take the choice of the flock, also pile fuel bones under it, make it boil well, and let the cuts simmer in it. Therefore, says the Lord God. Yeah, I'm going to hit the mouse button. On it. Uh. Woe to the bloody city, to the pot whose scum is in it, and whose scum is not from it. Bring it out piece by piece, of which no lot has fallen. Um. Well. I keep losing my spot. What is my deal? Ow, ow. Uh, good God. 
Oh, for her blood is in her midst. She set it on top of a rock. She did not pour it on the ground to cover it with dust, that it may raise up fury and take vengeance. I have set her blood on top of a rock. May not. That it may not be covered. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, Woe to the bloody city. I, will, I too will make the pyre great. Keep on the wood, kindle the fire, cook the meat well. Mix in the spices and let the cuts be burned up. Then set the pots empty on the coals. Wait a second. Just a second. It's like freezing in my room. I'm having to put a sweater on, so I apologize. Um, pot and its bronze may burn. Let its filthiness be may be melted in it, that its scum may be consumed. She has grown weary with lies, and her great scum has not grown from her. Let her scum be in the fire, in your filthiness. In, in your filthiness, wait, what? Yeah, in your filthiness is lewdness. Okay, that just sounds weird. Because I have cleansed you, and you were not cleansed, and you will not be cleansed of your filthiness anymore. Okay. Until I have caused my fury to rest upon you, I, the Lord, have spoken it. It, will, it shall come to pass, and I will do it. I will not hold back, nor will I spare, nor will I relent according to your ways. According, and according to your deeds, they will judge you, says the Lord God. The, prophet wife's, the prophet's wife dies. Also the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, behold, I take away from you the desire of your eyes with one stroke. Yet you shall neither mourn nor weep, nor shall your tears run down. Sigh in silence, make no mourning for the dead, bind your turban on your head, put your sandals on your feet, do not cover your lips, and do not eat man's bread of sorrow. Ma'am. So I, sto I spoke to the people in the morning and the evening my wife died, and the next morning I did as I was commanded, and the people said to me, will you not tell us what these things signify to us, what you behave so? that you behave so? Then I answered them. The word of the Lord came to me, saying, Speak to the house of Israel. Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I will profane my sanctuary. Your arrogant boasts, the desire of your eyes, the delight of your soul, and your sons and daughters, whom you left behind, shall fall by the sword. And you shall do as I have done. You shall not cover your lips, nor eat man's bread of sorrow. Your turbans shall be on your heads, and your sandals on your feet, you shall neither mourn nor weep, but you shall pine away in your iniquities and mourn with one another. Hmm. Thus Ezekiel is a sign to you, according to all that he has done, you shall do. And when this comes, you shall know that I am the Lord God. And you, son of man, will it not be in that day that I will take when I take from them their stronghold, their joy and their glory, the desire of their eyes, and that on which they set their minds, their sons and their daughters, that on that day one who escapes will come to you to let you hear it with your ears. On that day your mouth will be open to him who has escaped. You shall speak and no longer be mute. Thus you will be assigned to them, and they shall know that I am the Lord your God. Ezekiel 25, proclamation against Ammon. Now the word of the Lord came again, uh, came to me, saying, Son of man, set your face against the Ammonites and prophesy against them. Say to the Ammonites, hear the word of the Lord God. Thus says the Lord God, because you said, Aha, against my sanctuary when it was profaned and against the land of Israel when it was desolate and against the house of Judah when they went into captivity. Indeed, 
Therefore, I will deliver you as a possession to the men of the east, and they shall set their encampments among you and shall, and make your dwellings among you. You shall eat your fruit, and they shall drink your drink of uh, milk. And I will make Rabbah, 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 a stable for camels and Ammon, a resting place for flocks. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. For thus says the Lord God, because, because you clapped your hands, stomped your feet, and rejoiced. Um, in in heart with all your disdain for the land of Israel. Indeed, therefore, I will stretch out my hand against you and give you as plunder to the nations. I will cut you off from all the peoples and I will cause you to perish from the countries. I will destroy you. <clears throat> Hold on. Hold on, baby. Hold on, baby girl. Okay. Um... Mm -hmm. oh, and, and you shall know that I am the Lord. Proclamation against Moab. Oh, excuse me. Pardon me. Thus says the Lord God, because Moab and Seir say, look, the house of Judah is like all the nations before. Therefore, uh, look, <laughs> like all the nations. Therefore, behold, I am clear. I will clear the territory of Moab of cities of the cities of its frontier. The glory of the country, Beth, Jeshemoth, Baal, Meon, and Kerjeth, Kerjeth, Kerjethayim, Jethayim, to men to east I will give it as a possession, together with the Ammonites, that the Ammonites may not be remembered among the nations, and I will ex execute judgments upon Moab. And they shall know that I am the Lord. Proclamation against Edom. Thus says the Lord God, because of what Edom did against the house of Judah by taking vengeance, and has stretched again, stretched out my hand against Edom, cut off man and beast from it, and making it desolate from Timan, Timon, Dedan shall fall by the sword. I will lay my vengeance on Edom by the hand. Uh, of my people Israel, that they may do in Edom according to my anger and according to my fury, and they shall know my vengeance, says the Lord God. Proclamation against Philistia. What is on the floor here? Man. Okay. Thus says the Lord God, because the Philistines dealt vengefully and took vengeance, took vengeance with a spiteful heart to destroy because of the old hatred. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, I will stretch out my hand against the Philistines and I will cut off the chariot Thites, and destroy the remnant of the seacoast. I will execute my vengeance on them with furious rebukes, and they shall know that I am the Lord when I lay my vengeance upon them. Ezekiel 26. Proclamation against Tyre. And it came to pass in the eleventh year and on the first day of the month that the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, because Tyre has come has said against Jerusalem, Aha, she is the land, Lord, she is broken. <laughs> Who was the gateway of the peoples? Now she is turned over to me. I shall be filled. She is laid waste. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, Behold, I am against you, O Tyre, and will cause many nations to come up against you. As the sea causes its waves to come up, and they will destroy the walls of Tyre, and break down her towers, I will also scrape her dust from her, and I will make her like the top of a rock. It shall be a place for spreading nuts in the midst of the sea, for I have spoken, says the Lord God. 
and shall become plunder for the nations. Also her daughter, villages, which are in the fields, shall be slain by the sword. Then they shall know that I am the God. For thus says the Lord God, Behold, I will bring against Tyre from the north, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, king of kings, with horses, with chariots, and with horsemen, and an army with many people. He will slay with the sword your daughter, villages, in the fields, who will reap up a siege around, a siege bound against you, build the wall against you, and raise a defense against you. He will direct his battering rams against your wall and against your axes, he will break down your towers because of the abundance of his horses. Your dust he will cover you. Your walls will shake at the noise of the horsemen, the wagons. And the chariots. When he enters your gates, as men enter a city that has been preached, breached. When the hoofs of his horses he will trample all your streets, he will slay your people by the sword, and your strong pillars will fall to the ground. They will plunder your riches and pillage your merchandise. They will break your break they will break down your walls and destroy your pleasant houses. They will lay your stones your timber and your soil and down in the midst of the water. I will put an end to the sound of your songs and the sound of your harps it shall be heard no more. I will make you like the top of a rock. It shall be a place for spreading nuts and you have never been rebuilt. For I know, for I the Lord have spoken, says the Lord God. Thus is the Lord God to Tyre. Will the coastlands not shaken at the sound of your fall? When the wounded cry, when slaughter is slain in the midst of you, then all the princes of the sea will come together, come down from their homes, lay aside their robes, and take off their embroidered garments. They will clothe themselves with trembling, they will sit on. They will sit on the ground, tremble every moment, and be astonished at you. And they will take every moment for you, and say to you, "How you have perished, O oh, inhabited by seafaring men, O oh, renowned city, who is strong at sea, she and her inhabitants." Who caused their terror to be on all the inhabitants. All her inhabitants, I mean. Now the coastlands tremble on the day of your fall. Yes, the coastlands by the sea are troubled at your departure. For thus says the Lord God. Now make you a desolate city, like cities that are not inhabited. And I bring the deep pit upon you, and great waters that cover you. Then I will bring you down with those who descend into the pit to the people of old, and I will make you dwell in the lowest part of the earth in places desolate yeah. from antiquity with those who go down to the pit so that you may never be inhabited. And I shall establish glory in the land of the living. I will make you a terror, and you shall be no more, though you are sought for. You will never be found again, says the Lord God. First Peter 2, our inheritance through bla uh, Christ's blood. Therefore, laying aside all malice, all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and all evil speaking, as newborn babes, the desire, the pure milk of the word, that you may grow thereby, if indeed you have, in have tasted that the Lord is gracious, the chosen stone and his people, his chosen people, coming to him, coming to him as to a living stone, rejected stone by men, but chosen by God and 
precious. You also, as living stones, are being built by a special house, a special priesthood to offer up spiritual spiritual sacrifices. Acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Therefore, it is account, also accounted in the scripture. Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect precious, and he who believes on him will by no means be put to shame. Therefore, to you who believe, he is precious, but to those who are disobedient, the stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. And a stone of, uh, of stumbling and a stone of and a rock of offense. They stumble, being disobedient to the world, to the word, to which they also were appointed. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. His own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into the marvelous light, who were once not a people, but are now the people of fraud, who had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy, living before the world. Beloved, I beg you as sojourners, pilgrims, abstains from fleshly lust, which war against the soul, having your conduct honorable among the Gentiles, that when they speak against you as evildoers, they say, May they may, by your work, good works which they deserve, glorify God in the day of visitation. Submission to submission to government. Close this page real quick. Therefore, submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, whether to the king or supreme or to governors as to those who are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers and for the praise of those who do good. For this it will be the free will of God, that by doing good you may put to silence. Yeah. The ignorance, thank God, of foolish men, as free yet not using liberty as a cloak for vice, but as bond servants, of God, honor all people, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the king, submission to masters, servants be submissive to your masters, with all fear, and not only to the good and the gentle, but also to the harsh. For there is uncommon, uh, uncommendable. If believed, if because of conscience toward God one endures grief, suffering wrongfully, what for what credit is it uh, is it if when you are beaten for your faults you take it patiently, but when you do good and suffer and if you take it patiently this is commendable before God, for this, for to this you were called, being Christ also suffered for us, us leaving as an example that you should follow His steps. Who committed no sin, nor was deceit found in his mouth. Uh, who, when he was reviled, did not revile in return. When he was suffered, he, he did not threaten. But committed himself to him who judges seriously. By himself for our sins in his own body. Hmm. on the tree, that we, having died to sins, might live for righteousness, by those by whose stripes you were healed. So for, for you were like sheep going astray, that we have now returned to the shepherd, who is that overseer of your souls. Return to the shepherd. Now return to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. Amen. Well, that is the end of the reading for the 25th. Okay, right in this one. And I am actually trying to fall asleep, guys. 
So, I'm going to have to do the last one tomorrow when I start working on the Part Bs because I'm literally trying to fall asleep while I'm reading. That's why I kept reading all weird. So, I'll do the other one tomorrow when I get back from the dentist and get those others knocked out and get it all called that. So, I hope you have a blessed night and shalom or blessed day now. It's after midnight. And I will see you tomorrow or later today. Bye-bye.